Welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is James. I'm the community manager for Roboco, and here today with the Roboco team uh, to give you a little bit of a, a look at our game, our Steam Festival demo, uh, and sort of a behind the scenes look at uh, you know what it takes to make a game like this. So joining me today is the entirety of the Roboco dev team. Uh, we're all gonna just take a moment to just introduce ourselves and talk a little bit about our role on the project. So we can start off today with the person who's gonna be piloting the game, uh, Joe. What up? Hello, I'm Joe, I'm Robo Joe, official <laughs> Robo Co. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, I'm the UI UX person on the project and for the layman's out there, UI is user interface and UX is user experience. So I'm the guy, if anything feels bad, just blame me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, hi, then we can jump over to Luke. Yeah, I'm Luke, um, and I'm the uh, lead game designer on the project. And um, yeah, so I'm uh, responsible for just what you would think, like figuring out how to make the game fun, how to make sure that all the engineering aspects of it are super robust, um, and uh, just coordinating what's what's going on on the team. Cool. I can go next. Uh, hey, everyone. I'm Robo Allen. I'm also a game designer on the project. <laughs> um, I guess more specifically, I work on the challenges. <clears throat> so the game revolves around different challenges, and I'm responsible for kind of setting them up and making them fun and all that. Hey, I'm Jonathan, uh, Robo Jonathan, I guess. Um, so I'm, I'm a game engineer, so I type a lot of code and tell uh, the computer what to do to make the game play. Um, so that means a lot of physics works. I mostly do the tool stuff um, and overall architecture. Hey, um, I'm Carter. I'm also a game engineer. I also type a bunch of code um, to tell the game what to do. <laughs> uh, and um, yeah, hopefully like getting the, the robots to do what they want and making new features. Sweet. Cool. Well, now that you've met the team, um, Joe is going to jump in. We're going to show off a little bit of gameplay of the demo. Joe, give us a little bit of a, of a preview. What are we going to be doing today? Gotcha. Yeah, so we're just going to be playing the sandwich level for a little bit. And I know you guys have seen that probably many times so far. But uh, just going to start building stuff. Woot. Yeah. Building stuff in a building game. I like it. I know. Um, so while you get started, um, Luke, you want to tell us a little bit about maybe the history of Roboco and sort of what this game's all about for anyone who's just here for the first time? Sure. Yeah. So Roboco is a robot building a sandbox game. You're, you're designing and building robots to serve the needs of these squishy human characters. Um, and the idea is that you're in this Roboco uh, robot building facility and they have these very elaborate test areas where here they've set up a restaurant um, and you're designing a robot that can uh, take a sandwich from this dispenser and um, deliver it to the table and keep it uh, smoothly upright on the plate and not drop anything get that person's order to them and um, this uh, we've been using this as our example challenge for a while because of the challenges that we've made it is one of the more uh, like entry level, it just it, if we start out with a challenge that's super super tough, then um, uh, even if you can do it eventually, it's just not a good starting level. So we've been starting with this one, um, and uh, yeah, there's a, still though a wide variety of strategies that people will use, which is kind of the point um, for how to do this. There's there's ways of um, keeping the sandwich on that um, that. Uh, yeah, that we'll probably see like only one in this session, but but uh, we'd love to see actually uh, on our Discord, we have a creations channel where we'd love to see ways that you guys did it or just other cool robot builds that you made. Um, as far as the history of the project, uh, so this is, this is a project that is funded by the National Science Foundation um, through a, a, a small business innovative research grant. Um, and it began as um, a pretty open-ended, like we're making a STEM learning game in VR. Um, and then 
originally, yeah, the, all of all of the stuff that we were doing as far as building the robots was with VR wands, um, and we were just really compelled by the idea of the physical touch aspect of that. Get a little closer to what it might be like if you were in, manipulating a Lego Mindstorms kit or a Bex kit. Um, and the desktop version evolved over time, um, and now has come to be like a pretty pretty sweet mode of its own. Um, so that's what we're looking at right now. Um, yeah. yeah, Joe, do you want to say a little bit about just like, yeah, what you're sure. doing since we're starting to build? You betcha. Yeah. I'm just setting up my motors here. I got so I got a motor part in the parts list. And I also have a rod, and basically the motor is driving the rod. So whatever you put in a motor like that, uh, that's what's going to drive you. And let me just get another wheel here. Mechanical. Yeah, so I don't have I don't have any controls hooked up right now, so it should yep, just drive forward. Mm -hmm. Look at him, look at him go. Mm -hmm. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> The team and I were seeing uh, Joe's gameplay on a little bit of a delay because of the stream, but mm -hmm. I'm seeing it now. Oh my gosh! That was yeah, how how, <laughs> how, uh, how are audio levels, by the way? Just just making sure, Chad. Yeah, stream. Let us know how the audio levels are, and we can uh, we can adjust those on the fly. Cool, cool. Thanks. Yeah. All right, let's hook up some controls. Folks so are saying audio sounds good. Before you hooked up controls, then why did it move at all? So why did it move? Yeah, because the motors all have power, and the motors are driving the rod, and the rod is the wheels are attached to the rod, so those are just going to continually spin. A DC motor will continually spin in whatever direction you set it. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so we just we just set up all the DC motors to default to uh, spinning forward. forward. Um, yeah, and then once you start hooking up controls, we assume you don't want that anymore. Now you're trying to do something more custom to key presses. Right. So like this is now I'm in the controls tab here, and I have keys like WSAD, and I'm gonna have W spin all the motors forward, and S is gonna spin all the motors reverse, and so I'll just test that. W and S. Yeah, there we go. Can't turn yet, but I'm gonna do tank controls now. Let's see, select these guys. So I'm gonna have A, which is left. I'm gonna have these motors here spin reverse. So you want that to go backwards. And then these motors here to spin forward and then vice versa on the others go left, right left boom awesome all right let's see if i can actually deliver a sandwich here <laughs> oh uh, maybe not ah <laughs> 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 uh, well <laughs> <laughs> all right i'm gonna go a bit taller here we got a comment in the steam chat uh from multi j saying uh hello thanks for the demo tried this at playmake learn conference in madison a few years ago when it first started and i'm enjoying what it's seeing it's uh progressed into hey thank nice. you thank you nice to see you again yeah okay. thanks so much for stopping by the game has definitely evolved over the last couple of years we actually when it first started um it wasn't even called roboco it was under sort of a different project code name um called roboco now called Roboco. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Let's try again. Oh, your bot just looks like a Wii. Uh, yeah, that's, that's what I'm building here. <laughs> a Wii on wheels. All right. Yeah, it's not working out. You look a little top heavy there, Joe. I am very <laughs> top heavy. I'm going to add some weight, a heavy block to the bottom here. Get the center of mass lower. There and there and there. Yeah. Yeah, there we go.
All right, nice and slow. Pick up a little speed. Come on. And yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Folks are suggesting well, you can hold the shift button to um, run any motor at half speed. That's yes. a good tip for yep. anyone playing the demo as well. Yeah, right yep. Yeah, so this is full speed, and this would be half here. Yeah. Yep. Some folks yeah, are saying. Uh, well, I technically did the challenge because the sandwich yeah. landed on the floor. The floor. <laughs> <laughs> Close yeah. to the five second rule. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Close enough, yeah. indeed. Yeah, we tried to make it so that all the challenges have um, like a more like entry level basic form of success as well as some more uh, advanced bonus objectives. And since this one's really early, that. The, the base level of success is, is very, very low base. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. And really just trying to like make you feel like you're you're having some progress even after you just succeed in getting getting your robot to the other side of the room with the sandwich still on top. Um, and then uh, as far as the bonus objectives go, uh, something people haven't seen a lot of yet, but we're actually um, uh, have had designed for a while and are actually currently implementing is um each of those bonus objectives then earns you a, a bit which is like a little star like um earn, like earnable mario, thing like, yeah like a mario, mario star, star so. yeah um and uh and then it's determining the <clears throat> the unlocking of uh challenges and parts and um so that's that's why you're ultimately going to want to do some of those bonus objectives but we're not going to control the particular ones you decide you want to do just once you've done a certain amount, then okay, now it's time you can move on to some some cool new stuff. Yeah. And I can kind of explain what I'm doing here. I'm going a little crazy. Uh, I'm just making like a tray that's just gonna like launch the rope, the the sandwich off. And I'm using a servo motor here. And the servos are uh, motors that have limited angles. And so here you can kind of see where that angle is being limited. If I type that down to 90, I think that's the direction I want it to go. Yeah, just like that. Yeah. Cool. So this is like a totally yeah. different approach at delivering the sandwich than, you know, just building a vehicle and having it drive over to the table. Um, we've seen like a lot of actually really interesting uh, approaches to this challenge over the years, showing off the, the demo at like uh, indie game events. Um, I know I've seen like a sandwich catapult, kind of like what Joe's doing here. I've also seen uh, another uh, approach where it's like an, a large accordion robot uh, that sort of just like expands its arms over to the table. That one was was definitely kind of mind blowing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and we've had some people um, make almost conveyor belt like rollers to just like move the move the sandwich forward. Um, yeah, so the. Uh, that's really the goal of all of our challenges is that they're like mini sandboxes, right? You're meant to be able to do it in um, a variety of ways. Oh, here we go. We had a question from the chat. Actually, this one's probably a good one for John and Carter. They're asking what physics engine we're using for Roboco. Yeah, sure. So uh, we are building this game with Unity. Um, so Unity's default physics engine is PhysX. Um, so recently we just had an upgrade to a newer version of PhysX um, inside the Unity engine, which has been awesome because it, it's afforded us like uh, much higher fidelity physics than we could previously get in previous versions of Unity PhysX. Um, yeah. yeah, and then on top of that, John is also writing a lot of the rules for how parts behave within that physics engine so it's there's like i don't know what to call that but there's there's sort of the john engine on top of the physics engine <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah and there's, there's certain parts that we need to do a lot more with like there's a lot of code that goes behind it and servos work like servos um and uh, motors work as, as much like motors as, as we can given the engine um, <laughs> Uh, things like gears, uh, we, we don't have direct access to the engine code, um, so making gears work is, is kind of an interesting thing uh, in, in a system like, or using the tools that we have within Unity, um, which means that we're using simple joints to, to make uh, 
something more complicated like a gear interaction work? <laughs> I'm just getting creative with cosmetics here. <laughs> yeah, we had a, a adding personality to the robot. Absolutely, we had a shout out uh, from uh, looks like Dr. Diana Brain the Dr. Oh. Diana Brain in the oh. uh, Twitch channel um, saying that the UI is colorful and beautiful and uh, oh. user friendly. That's for you, Joe. Oh, thank you so <laughs> much. <laughs> All Joe. Speaks to my heart. <laughs> Joe, I love what you've done with this robot. I know, right? It's a hand. Yeah. Where, uh... <laughs> oh, wait. I need, I need eyebrows. Yeah, we have to know what Moody's in. There we go. Yep, exactly. Just... So neutral right now. <laughs> yeah. It looks like it wants a hug. <laughs> uh, I do have a hugging bot, I'll show. <laughs> so we've got a ton of cosmetics in the game so far, but I'm definitely interested in what the chat thinks for any cosmetics that they'd like to see in the game, maybe in a future yeah. update. We're always open to suggestions and ideas. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, also just a, a shout out to... Uh, to Meg Tyler, who uh, did a lot of 3D art uh, with us. And yeah, I think aesthetically what we were um, trying to do with this project is make it really approachable feeling. Like honestly, a lot of us, this was our, uh, our like, our attempt to come into like more of a mechanical engineering space ourself, which is something we do pretty often at the, the company we work at is like a, a tackle new areas that we have to learn about as we're doing them. And um, for a lot of people, it's intimidating, right? You just like give them a bunch of parts and they're like, I have no idea. Like, what am I supposed to do with any of these things? Um, and so uh, originally when we were working on the VR version, um, we hadn't developed this look yet. We hadn't developed the, the humans yet. We hadn't really even developed yet the approach of like trying to make everything feel quite as like colorful or friendly, right? Um, and it was more just like, okay, well, we've seen engineering competitions that people do in the real world, robotics competitions, and that's how you kind of train new generations of engineers. So we should do something like that. And a lot of our challenges were like your very traditional, you know, pick up this cube, go through this obstacle course kind of challenges. And it was really when we started, um, we actually originally started building challenges out of just colored blocks, because that's what we had in the game already was some colored blocks. So we started building these kind of Lego-like environments. And um, the more whimsical, fun ones always stood out, just gave so much more personality to the game. And uh, and we're really hoping that it uh, feels a little more inviting to people that uh, find the idea of building robots intriguing. But maybe if you just sat them in front of like a CAD, they would, they would, they would freak out a little bit. Or you know, they're, not, they're not really like they're not already part of like a first robotics team. Um, and this could be a really nice um, way of, of just making it more more like a fun and approachable for everyone. Definitely. We even had a, a comment in the chat just now that um, from Dr. Diana Brain again, that they don't know anything about robotics, but they want to try the game. And they said your explanation was awesome, Luke. <laughs> yeah. Fabulous. Thanks. So we also had a question in Steam chat, trying to keep up with all the chats. Um, <clears throat> how is the VR version of RoboCode different? I have a WMR VR headset that isn't supported yet, so wasn't able to try it to see that version of the game yet. Um, I think we should probably clarify just where that version of the game is at right now. Mm -hmm. This is um, the question's about the VR version? Yeah, just asking, like, firstly, um, you know, I think we should just talk about where it's at development-wise, yeah. but then also, um, how does it differ from the desktop version? Yeah, uh, I can take that one. So, sure. um, so the just so no one spends a lot of time being like, why isn't it working with my headset or whatever, uh, the version we put out in the Steam Game Festival, we just put the, the desktop version out. Um, we had to do this largely because it's... Um, it's just tough. So in in any kind of product development, there's this term uh, SKU, uh, which is like SKU, and it's how many different products you're really supporting, like that you're going to ship. And uh, uh, we are intending for this to actually let you like switch between modes freely, and we actually have that working. But still, when it comes time to polish the game, we have to like polish two sides of it at once. <laughs> Uh, in order to get both out, and uh, so just based on how fast the Steam Game Festival like came together, um, 
Valve announced it, I think like a month before it was happening, um, we decided that we would just focus on polishing like the desktop experience um, and then uh, come back to the VR version. As far as where the VR version is, um, there is, we should probably try to, you know, up, update some of this, but there's um, this blog post where you can kind of see us switching between modes and like building robots in each mode. Um, anyone that was with us at PAX West 2019 um, played, the, played the, yeah, the Indian Mega Booth, uh, played the VR version there. Um, and uh, yeah, that, like I said, that's like where the project actually began was like with that interface. So um, I think the biggest thing we need right now is just like time to um, like kind of, you know, clean it up <laughs> a little bit before we before we unleash it on people so that people aren't just like frustrated by little little you know gotcha things with it um i think as far as the um the rest i don't know yeah the, that's that's kind of the status of it right now the rest of like um how we're gonna keep it in sync and like release wise and everything i don't think is really fully de determined but um yeah, it's it's uh, it's mostly just a struggle whenever we're doing these kind of quick demo experiences that it's tough to it's tough to demo both at once. Sure, makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Give a quick shout out. We got Scrap Man up in the Twitch hey. chat. Thanks for tuning in, Scrap Man. One of our favorite content creators. He's made a couple of really awesome Roboco videos, uh, so definitely go check those out. They're up on a playlist on the Roboco YouTube channel. Uh, Scrapman's videos, Con Gaming's videos, Durf, uh, and more. Uh, so those are super funny if you want to get even more Roboco gameplay in after this. Totally. Yeah. All right. Well, <laughs> I'm gonna load in my Mr. Huggy here. <laughs> <laughs> Show like charmingly named Mr. Hug. <laughs> yeah, look at him. So oh my god, <laughs> that looks horrifying. I gotta be honest. <laughs> and, oh dear, you all seen this? Oh yeah, looks like one of those bagel trays, but like come to life. This guy's always in my way, so let's give him a hug. <laughs> oh, come on, come here. Just want a hug. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's something uh, new that we started uh, implementing, which is um, uh, the shutdown mode for humans. Because yeah. there's, there's there's a limit we want to put to the amount of abuse you can you can do to humans. We and did I mean, just have a question in the chat asking if there are robo police, um, and so this we are sort of showing that now. <laughs> the mechanism of that. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, I, I, we're we're still honestly this the shutdown mode feature is pretty new, and I know that some people, uh, especially based on in, in the past when we had some streamer videos that didn't exist, that some people have asked about you know, would there be a way to turn it off in sandbox mode? And I'm not sure yet, honestly, if we'll go that far, but I do think we're definitely still thinking about the um, like code that it might need or the the like tuning that it might need to just like make it feel more appropriate like if you were this person and you were a real human you would be like okay i'm gonna shut down the robot for sure uh, 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 whereas uh we've seen some videos that people posted on the discord of just like, and now it's um, shut down time. yeah this is this is shut down time for sure and this i think this makes sense to always be shut down time because i i wouldn't put that up with that if i was you <laughs> if i was that person um but uh we did see on the discord like uh, someone was just driving robots around, or driving humans around in like a little cart, and they're just sitting on it. And uh, ideally, that wouldn't be shut down time because that that seems harmless enough. Part of what's tricky is since the whole game is a physics sandbox, we have to like figure out what kind of physics like rules we use to tell the difference. So like how much uh, force is applied to the humans for how long, and or um, how fast are they moving, and um, yeah, so that. We're still a little early on, on those things, so if it feels a little bit off sometimes, that's probably why, and we'll just we'll continue to refine it until it feels a little more fair. Yeah. yeah. 
Scrapman jumped in. He said that um, in the process of making his new Roboco video that's coming out today, showing off pistons, uh, he had a lot of fun with shutdown mode. Uh, but he did have a suggestion that um, shutdown mode might need a cooldown if you stay right. away from human for a certain amount of time. So that's, that's a really good suggestion. Yeah. yeah, that's I a like great that. idea. Yeah, I think right now it is actually always just accumulating, like like the meter stopped at the last, there's like an invisible meter that's filling up and it stopped at its last point, but it would, it would be a good idea to have it gradually deplete with time. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> yeah. It's like a limbo bot. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's see if this works. Oh, gosh. Uh, oh, no. Well, I tried. Okay, question in the chat. Um, how long did Roboco take to develop from the original concept to today? Yeah, That's so yeah, J yeah, James and I were just doing this math yesterday, actually. So, so, <laughs> so um, I think the actual development time is like mm -hmm. somewhere around 26 to 28 months. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's a over two years. Um, in like real time, it was more like three years. Uh, and that's because since we were a grant funded project, we had periods of time when we had like finished what's called phase one of the grant. Um, and then we're looking for, for partners and we're putting proposals together and maybe do a little bit of um, dev like in between other projects. And then it really picked up in earnest in, uh, around March, 2019, we started like, this this round which also includes a phase two of the grant um and we've just been going ever since like pretty pretty full force but um yeah in total couple couple years plus okay. Sweet. sandwich bot here and also yeah. shout out to autumn who's joining us in the chat awesome <laughs> yeah so autumn uh as some of you may know was also a game engineer on this project and uh built the rule scripting mm -hmm. system that um is our scripting system for making challenge objectives work and mm -hmm. potentially other other kind of triggered behaviors so when when you deliver this sandwich to the table um and it checks all those boxes for you the way it's figuring that out is is via rule script uh, or likewise, even a lot of our human behaviors, I think, Joe, are triggered with rule script. Yes. Yeah. 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 Most. Um, most all. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, so. Yeah. Thank you very much, Tom. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, um, one question from the <laughs> Steam chat, which is how to start in VR mode. Um, so that's not actually in the uh, current demo that's available right now. Right. That's something that we'd be looking at releasing um, later down the line. But that is that mode is unfortunately not currently available in the demo on the Steam uh, Games Festival. You can yeah. still get a little bit of gameplay, though, up on our dev blog, which is roboco.co. Some of our older posts have a little bit of footage of, of VR mode um, from, a, from a while back, but it's, it's still a cool example of, of being able to see switching between the two modes on the fly. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, if, if, actually, if one of you doesn't mind to link to that post, because it's actually tough yeah. to get to it. Like the um, the way the website is right now, I don't think you can get back that far easily. Well, we do that right now. Um, right. Just because it only shows like the most recent posts. Yeah. We are migrating to a new website. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. It's underway. <laughs> um, break free of the bonds of Squarespace. Yeah, and for those of you that are really excited about the VR, I mean, like we're also huge fans of, of VR, so we, we, we hear you and we know it is a little bit frustrating having it kind of like switch back and forth. We just we just uh, we just need a little bit of time to make sure that what you guys are playing has like gone through like a proper like polish and QA and you know, right. Yeah. Yep. Rise yeah. to the Roboco quality standard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Just seeing if there's any other bots to to show off. I've never seen that forklift. That was yeah, an expensive that's lift. Bunch of pistons, yeah. I love pistons. Look at that. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Uh, let's see. This guy's extended. Yeah. Uh, the build zone restriction size is something relatively new. So, <laughs> so I have some ro robots that uh, weren't yeah. quite built. They're, they're <laughs> illegal, basically. They're illegal robots, yes. 
Yeah, this is actually another feature that we love feedback on. If um, if you guys are playing the demo and you're like, oh, this this build zone felt like unnecessarily big or unnecessarily small. Like they're all right now at just like one size. Um, and uh, ultimately they'll we'll probably be tuning those based on the particular challenge or part of the sandbox. So. Yeah, it's worth mentioning uh just from the physics side of things, uh, that chain that Joe made would yep. not have been feasible in the old version of his. No, nope. that's the yep. one huge yep. that we've seen. That is true. So cool that we were able to do stuff like this because um, of the happy right. uh, happy yeah. bar mitzvah to the Green Goblin in the Twitch chat. Oh, yeah, happy hey. bar mitzvah! Congratulations. All the top. That's awesome. Robots look a little tall there, Joe. I know. I know. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> But the chain is beautiful as ever. All right, let's see. That should do it. God, that chain's so nice. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. If you if you go and look at old like uh, Scrap Man or uh, uh, Con or Durf or Gaming Faster Than Light or any of the streaming videos with the um, version back in I don't know what was that February. Yeah. Um, yeah. Everything is just so much more likely to spaz out <laughs> just like loose integrity <laughs> so we, we really enjoyed working with the new engine it took a pretty big overhaul to get everything working with it so thanks to john and joe for taking the bulk yeah. of that work oh yeah, yeah. mostly john yeah uh <laughs> so another system we can kind of talk through is the joints system and i know that's uh kind of a unique thing for robo but basically every time you attach something to your robot you're creating a joint and the joints here are by default they're fixed so you can actually go into this joint and change it to be like rotating and that means here i'll make it longer so it's more obvious yeah so this joint here is actually just going to rotate like that and you can do this for all the joints which is pretty cool and rods are a kind of a unique joint because for a rod, you can have, just extend it here. You can have it fixed, you can have it rotating, you can have it sliding, and you can have it sliding and rotating. So sliding obviously is like a, it'll go in and out from, from that position. And rotating is, yeah, self-explanatory here. If you put like a block on the end of it, you yeah. can see it yeah. rotating better. I see that there yeah look at that you can get real creative with <laughs> a joint system like that and yeah i'm just gonna fix this guy here because it was a fixed joint oh there <clears throat> oh yeah all right cool there we go All right, now we can test this out. <laughs> this chain thing is awesome. Oh gosh, I think I'm a little lopsided. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Nitro Cell just jumped in on Twitch chat with a suggestion that it'd be nice if you could tell where uh, you want the joint across the segment. For instance, with the rotating joint, imagine you want the joint to be at the very end of the stick. Right, yep, yeah, I agree. I, and that was something that was kind of a UX struggle for a little while, and it still is. Um, but one way around that right now is to delete the joint, because you can also delete joints like this, and then add a rod to the point that you want that rotation to happen. So oh, here okay. I'm just gonna like put this in, and now now it'll rotate at like the end point there. Yeah, yeah. And if we can figure out a way to you know move joints someday or whatever, then we'll we'll talk about it. It's just like yeah, it's a, uh, yeah. We don't we don't know yet know how to do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Yeah, pistons are kind of a unique thing. I'm, I'm seeing talk of pistons, and they don't use rods, although they technically do. Um, it might be something we want to think about more. It's like, should mm. should pistons operate with rods? Because then you could hmm. like extend that piston however far it would mm. need to go. 
Actually, Joe, do you want to just show a resizing of a piston? Because I, yeah, I think yeah, it's actually, no, kind of um, from from the feedback I've seen, I think it's um, one of probably the things we're not doing a very good job of teaching that it exists. Um, yeah, but, uh, um, yeah, so right now what you can resize in the game um, has been mainly blocks and, and rods, just like things that have, you know, po polygon shapes to them, not, not strictly like blocks of different shapes, I mean, yeah. um, and rods. And then pistons are our first uh, real extension of that to less structural kind of part. Uh, and you can resize this, make it longer, and then the shaft will come out further. Yeah. So, um, by default. Yeah. yeah, if anyone's looking for a way to just have that piston extend farther, that's, that's how you do it. Um, yeah, in the long run, we'd love to have a way to incorporate as many parts as possible into the resize system. And that's, that's also a potentially tricky problem. Some some parts resize easier than others. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, we'd love to apply that everywhere. Cool. Uh, some questions popping up in the chat. Um, so one is, how did play testing work for this? How many different people or groups did you play test it with? Mm. Oh, gosh. Mm. That's a good um, A lot. <laughs> a I, lot. Let's see. But um, yeah, I uh i know early in the project i kind of wanted to set up this structure that we never really did which was just like a recurring cadence of like friends and family style playtests like come into the office but um instead of a lot of our playtesting has just been based on um either whenever there were videos to the studio visitors to the studio would take advantage of it um at one point i flew out to um portland oregon for some user testing with a partner a potential business partner out there um and uh we've brought in specifically some uh robotics uh or engineering teachers and had them come in check it out give us feedback um and then yeah anytime that we're going to um any of these kind of public events like play make learn conference or the pax west conference then we're doing effectively some amount of play testing there i mean I'm, we hope that we you know smoothed out the experience for them but uh but nevertheless you know games always get better all the time um and uh we do in the studio we do these things called game playing times um which um really just means other people that aren't working on this project they're working on other projects in the studio come and play it and give us some feedback um and that was actually really challenging in the vr days because we had to um have everyone sign up for like a 15 minute slot since we only had like a, a headset or two that we could put them in at a time. Um, and then now that it's been desktop uh, focused, we've, we've been able to do some testing of like the sandwich challenge at scale and hoping to do that as well with all of our challenges. Yeah, awesome. right. most successful delivery so far. Cool, um, and then another question from the chat. Um, can we say a little bit about some of the other challenges in the full game? They've been, I think they've been peering at the challenges that are behind the coming soon overlay. Yeah. Um, so like prepare a romantic dinner sounds interesting. <laughs> yeah, Alan, you wanna, you wanna tease some stuff? <laughs> oh yeah. Um, yeah, romantic dinner is a good one. Uh, there is a lot of opportunity for chaos in that challenge, but yeah. it's also very similar to the sandwich challenge. Um, and that you're kind of like preparing a table for a meal. Um, there's going to be a lot of different interactable elements in it, uh, like candles, and I guess that's all a tease for now. Um, some of the other cool challenges, uh, Pinata's in the demo too, or at least you can see it teased. Uh, I think breaking uh, up Pinata. Oh, the... Yeah. Wait, in like the... under the overlay? Demo? Yep, coming soon. Oh, 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 in the yeah. menu. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Luke just starts swinging. <laughs> like, <"What?" laughs> Luke's like, people are playing that already? No, I, was just, <laughs> yeah. um, I feel like people are definitely going to have fun with that one. Uh, probably an easy time, too, just seeing like the destructive bots that people are already making, because that's a challenge that inherently is like requires you to just break stuff, which is lots of fun, of course. Um, yeah, yeah and there's, of course, like, like a few that are uh, teased in the new uh, trailer, which is awesome. Uh, we got like a goo challenge where you're like preventing a goo leak from happening um, and crossing like a gap of like this toxic goo. Um, we got cleaning a room that's got a sleeping human in it. Uh, so I know a lot of you have like messed with the vacuum part of it. 
which can right. cause a lot of chaos or do uh, good. Um, that's kind of what that challenge revolves around. Yeah, there's there's a little bit of footage of that in our new trailer too, if you haven't seen that yet. Yeah, the new trailer is up on Steam right now on the Steam page, and I'm about to drop a link to the YouTube uh, video in both of the chats. Yeah. Yeah, one of the things we've been working on with a lot of the challenges was trying to find ways to um, make sure that we're not just like swapping out the uh, what's called like the end effector of the robot, meaning like what it's using to manipulate objects. Um, and so uh, a lot of times what really differentiates that one challenge from another is um, what forms of like reach does the does the robot need to have in order to like get to certain areas or like what does it need to lift? So we had a challenge that started out as um, sawing trees uh, and it's still about sawing trees, but now it's also about once you get that log down on the on the ground, um, how do you like lift it up and put it into the truck? Um, and that, that's the trajectory a lot of the challenges have been taking is just like um, what what makes the the mechanism that you're building like a little bit more more complicated um we also have um let's see in that trailer you've seen like a uh a guy like waiting for like a soda can that that's um that's another one and uh, uh one there where there's like a goo leak in the facility uh, and you're trying to like stop the goo leak, and in that case, you're you're really like building the end effector. I don't really say why. Um, and um, yeah, so there should be a lot of fun fun stuff to do. Um, yeah, for those of you that have been following us for a while, I, I think we we also feel what you guys probably feel, which is like, oh, the sandwich challenge again. And part part of the challenge has been um, that we are just trying to find the right balance between. Um, getting some stuff out there because we also want like the tester feedback on it, but also making sure that we didn't just like spoil every challenge that we're ever going to have. And then when the game comes yeah. out, it's kind of like, oh, okay, yeah, I oh yeah, that one again. Oh yeah, I played it again. <laughs> so, so um, yeah, so that, that's still something that we're working out for our, for our closed alpha plans. Yeah. And another little element to challenges that we're adding to everything is having these secret tablets laying yeah. around. And so you can see this one here, it says, bring a piece of cake to the customer. So those are just little, little hidden things. Little fun things uh, to do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Got a couple more questions coming in from Twitch chat. Um, does our team have any inspirations? Like other games we like and are inspired from or concept arts? A lot. Let's see. We got, we got Besiege. That's, that's a classic. Uh, Kerbal is another just awesome game that inspired a lot of uh, just different UX choices and UI. Um, uh, scrap Mechanic, that's that's the other one. Yeah, has a lot of... Uh, Go ahead. Yeah, I, I would say we've also looked at... If, if you guys aren't familiar, there's a... Uh, more of like a... I think it's an, al an alpha right now called Gearblocks. Um, that is a pretty cool game where you can just like build mechanisms and um, yeah, we took a lot of uh, inspiration yeah, from, from that, for, particularly for joints. Um, and uh, let's see, I don't know what other things. Well, there's also uh, a lot of inspiration like outside of games too, like with Lego Mindstorm, so totally. like actual robots that are yeah. being implemented for different purposes. Yeah. Yeah, and in the VR days, we looked at you know, no one really knows how to make. Um, like the VR only days, I mean, when we were just thinking about the VR interface, no one really knows how to do VR interfaces like in a conventional way because those conventions haven't really been established yet. Nope. So we were looking at pretty much any VR thing that involved any form of like mm. picking things up, putting them together and try, try to figure out, you know, had an inventory in it um, and tried to think about different ways of, of, of doing that. Um, I don't even remember, Joe, was it called Bluebird? Was also something like unreleased that uh, yeah, I can't that had the we were like oh they have like a tablet type thing where you can like pull stuff out of and we like that more because sometimes in VR you have like a like a a menu watch and then you have to get all your parts by like putting your your wrist up and like accessing them from there and it's it doesn't scale in in our opinion it doesn't scale that well if you have a whole lot of parts which is obviously a goal for Roboco so. 
um, yeah, that that stuff was definitely very wild west. But um, uh, we're all, I think, as an industry, we're all kind of figuring out how to make VR work together. So definitely a shout out to all the all the developers in that space too. Yeah. Uh, should I switch to the sandbox scene? Just kind of. Yeah, let's do that. We got about 15 minutes left on the stream. So we'll switch over to the sandbox mode here and try to get through a couple more questions from folks in the chat. Uh, this next one's from Filament Steven, one of our coworkers. Uh, shout out to Steven. Thanks for tuning in. Um, we, he's asking, what were some of like the weird bugs that we came up and that we had to fix throughout the project? Um, and was there anything that was like way harder to implement or do in the game uh, than we had expected going into it? Yeah, weird bugs. John. Oh, huh. yeah, there's been a few. Um, yeah. Probably a lot of them uh, revolved around the uh, snapping system. Oh, yeah. Um, you just have, have things that you expect to be aligned and expect to see a highlight saying that you can snap it and it's just not working. Um, one of the strange things about the system is if this was desktop only, it probably would have been built differently. But because we've got the VR component, which isn't in the current demo, um, that means that we need to support uh, two ways of, of, of hooking things together. So in the VR mode, you're, you're holding two pieces uh, with different hands with the controllers and you snap them together. Um, whereas just on desktop, you're just pointing at a single location um, with your cursor and clicking to snap it there. So you kind of have to do this, like where will the robot be and where are all, all the points that, that will snap together um, once it's in that position. Um, so there are certainly some issues with that, um, not to mention a few things that are outside of our control uh, as far as what events we get from the physics engine through Unity. Um, yeah, the yeah. script is definitely a, a challenge thing, um, but I, I can't speak a ton into that because I, I didn't have a ton to do uh, other than yeah. uh, kind of just being there for consultation. Um, yeah. And, uh... We've got a full um, blog up on our dev blog at roboco.co detailing sort of the uh, uh, our approach to rule script as well. That was written by Autumn. Um, so definitely go ahead and check that out along with all the other awesome art behind the scene articles up there. From a physics standpoint, um, especially our, uh, earlier versions of PhysX, we, we had a lot of issues with physics freak out, which you know, is always gonna be an issue. Potentially you can always push the system to breaking, um, which can be fun too. So we're not necessarily discouraging that. It's more we yeah. We're trying to find the right want balance. To so build, they want to build. Yeah. 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 So we're trying to balance like where technology is currently with um, performance and mm -hmm. uh, with user expectations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this actually became part of our strategy early on when we were deciding to make the game more kind of lighthearted, playful feeling was just knowing that. No matter how hard we try, and we do try very hard to like make the physics engine behave, it's never going to perfectly behave. So, uh, so we figure we might as well like lean into it and make it a little less. Um, I think it's less frustrating when the game is um, like kind of having fun with you and it embraces a certain level of wackiness. And if this was like a very straight laced robotic simulator. Um, and then it doesn't really behave as you expected, then it's, um, it just feels a little worse. Uh, so that was also part of that inspiration. Makes sense. Scrapman jumping in on the chat saying that he found out wheels don't like super heavy bases, at least in the current iteration of the game. Um, <laughs> yeah. He had a couple of questions as well. Um, any plans for suspension or mirroring in a future update? Mm, yeah, I'd love to have something like that. Um, we've talked about John, like, springs and suspension. Yeah, John. Go yeah, John, didn't yep, you, yep, you did that's, that's prototype, um, right? Like, I think so. Um, yeah, so that's 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 an interesting point. Is with wheels, one of the, the nice things about the old system, surprisingly, is, is, is it had softer joints. So there was sort of, with every joint, there's a bit of suspension built into everything. There's a bit of springiness. Um, so with the current version, um, there, everything's a lot more rigid, which means that any little bump kind of travels through the entire chain. Um, so we've got some prototypes to make wheels uh, have a little bit of some some pneumatic uh, simulation. It's very rough, but 
know, we'd like to also have a suspension system. We'll see when that happens, um, how that happens, but a spring system would be amazing. Um, we've definitely done some prototypes and, and it's, it's definitely helpful. Yeah. Yeah, I think with everything, it's like, uh, yeah. uh, it's just, you know, we want, we also, we want all those things too. So we're just trying to figure out the right order to do them. And so we kind of, uh, tackle the, the ones that are feeling the most, the most like frustrating first and hopefully over time, keep like building and make everything smoother. Um, yeah. Yeah. Our warehouse is also full of these secret tablets too. So you yeah. get all these nice little secret objectives. Yeah. Around. Yeah. So we talked a lot about the robots and building aspect of the game, but I know a lot of times when we show off the game at conferences and online online and videos, a lot of people are like super obsessed with the humans. Um, I'm just curious if we could talk a little bit about how the human aspect of the game sort of came about. Oh boy, yeah, that was that was fun. <laughs> um, so it started with uh, building these little robo babies out of robot robo parts. So we had like motors and stuff and they were just kind of like crawling around. Uh, and we were, we the challenge, we were kind of like prototyping challenges. And that challenge was put the babies in the crib. And that, that challenge specifically worked really well, I think. And we had a lot of fun just kind of like trying to grab a little baby and put it in the, in the crib. And uh, then that kind of evolved into, well, let's try doing like more physics driven actual legit you know 3d model humans and uh experimented with that and it yeah it just kind of kept going after that and they yeah. grew up yeah they grew up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i think one of the things that it solved for us was um like w why do you want to do the challenge <laughs> right Absolutely. um because up until then like i said we took a lot of inspiration from uh, like real world engineering and robotics challenges and the whimsy was kind of starting to come in but even when they were whimsical they didn't really have like a purpose like you didn't you really want the player to feel good about like what they accomplished like did some good for like the game world in, in some way or some bad I guess if it's like a different game right? like, <laughs> or maybe this game I don't know um, but uh, uh, what the humans really brought was like robots needed some someone that they could help <laughs> and um and so that was really kind of a turning point in the vision for the game it came actually during one of those lull periods when we were um we'd finished phase one and we were looking for partners and so we kind of got a little second design phase where joe and i were just jamming on like uh how do we present like what this game is to business partners and um at that point we had already made the the robot babies that joe's talking about the ones that just were actually just motors and, and blocks and they just sort of looked like little robot babies um and joe joe put together this little tiny person um <laughs> that that was just like a little pillsbury doughboy mm -hmm. um even smaller than i think we've never shown this and no one's ever seen this little guy um and yeah. uh and uh joe like picked him up and made a little like elevator that he could like go up out of robot parts and uh that was really when it uh kind of changed i think at, at the time we weren't really sure where that was going like were they going to be these little like lemmings characters that, right. that you were interacting with or what um and then we did the the baby's demo which is up on the blog that some people have seen as kind of older history now um, where we did another version of the pick up the babies, put them in the crib, but now they're little Pillsbury babies. Um, and, uh, yeah. And then, uh, it start. you know, people started to, uh, including us, we were all kind of like, now it actually feels a little weird. Cause you're like picking up these little babies and like <laughs> the, and a lot of the like manhandling of them felt awkward. So, uh, over time it evolved into more of the, the adult fully grown humans that you see. Yeah. yeah, I'm just opening A26, doing it. <laughs> A 
couple of other questions coming in on the Twitch chat. Uh, this one's from Kiesel. Performance-wise, does it matter whether you make one large 10x10 block compared to 100 1x1 blocks after like the vehicle has been welded together? So, yeah, theoretically, that would make a difference. We're not currently doing any sort of collider merging to, to make bigger blocks. Um, so that could certainly have, a, have an effect on performance. Um, of course, it depends on your machine. So if you've got a beefy machine, it's probably going to be OK. So John, my understanding is we do something with, uh, I mean, this is a little on the technical side, side, side of things. But when we go into live mode, there's this thing called like a row bit that you create. Is there like a layman's explanation you could say of what you're doing? Sure. I mean, uh, yeah, it's, it's so basically uh, all these robots are made up of a collection of rigid bodies and a rigid body is just a body that represents um, mass and then colliders represent where that mass is. And then right. so like a, a hard object and that the physics engine understands as hard, right? right? Like, a, yep. Yeah. Yep. yeah. And then we also have these joints that connect all those rigid, rigid bodies together, which gets um, built based off where you set up your joints and how you build your your blocks um, yeah. inside the, the robot. So all those things represent. So um, wherever you see fixed joint, those will link up together and create a single rigid body. Um, so if you really wanted her performance, you'd make everything self-moving parts. Um, uh, so the plus is, is that you can move a lot of rigid bodies as long as they're simple rigid bodies. They don't have a huge performance cost, but you know eventually will add up to something. Um, yeah. As someone <clears throat> has astutely pointed out that Bow Prime is named like the Bow serialization we use in Roboco. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so so yeah for anyone that's i guess in the chat yeah bo, bo prime is autumn who uh, worked on this game so that's that would be why <laughs> yeah. bo prime in fact yeah. put that stuff there yeah <laughs> that, that is a that is a, a bo created system <laughs> that's awesome a couple there are more many, many bo created systems in, inside of oh, yeah. <laughs> we are very great yeah. that's very true yeah. <laughs> We had some more questions come in about the humans. Um, were any of them inspired by real people? Uh, and do any of them have names? Uh, and a couple of people suspecting that some of them might actually look like us. Right. Yep. <laughs> not really na names, not really, but it inspired. Yeah, mm -hmm. go, go, go ahead. Yeah, no, there's definitely some devs, uh, ins dev inspired humans in, in the scenes. I don't think there's any in this one, but. Uh, yeah. It's definitely something that we'll be doing more of probably yeah yeah mostly if you've seen us you've probably seen us in like the the first trailer that we did the teaser trailer um joe did some cameos for for people in the studio in that trailer when it does the little flyby of the um of the facility um and then uh uh yeah some people have pointed out that uh brandon <laughs> brandon you want to say hi you're in you're in the hello <laughs> yep, I'm uh, I'm in I'm in the cafe scene. Um, you know, six months of not getting haircuts ago. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, but yeah, honestly, humans in general, we probably still need to spend a little more time on to get the full like variety of humans that we're we're like imagining, um, yeah. and uh. So probably more stuff will happen there. So in this demo, I don't think that most of us appear. But if you if you're like on Discord and you see a little avatar that looks that I use that looks like me, or an avatar that Joe Joe uses that looks like Joe, the, the, those were made for the trailer. I love it. So yeah, definitely check out our original teaser trailer that's up on our Steam page as well as our YouTube channel. And yeah, if you pause towards the end, uh, you may be able to to recognize some familiar faces <laughs> yeah. from our team. Another question coming in from Wally Walrus. Uh, will multiplayer ever be a thing? Uh, I, I mean, ever is a I, long time. So so the model that we're using <laughs> is is, um, is similar to other, uh, particularly sandbox games, obviously, but really like any, any systems driven game that's on early access is maybe using that model a little differently than like a uh, like if it was a narrative driven game, it's almost like, should I even use early access? Cause then you're really just asking people to like play through your narrative 
and it's in like a less polished state and then they'll be done and then do they want to play it again later when it's unpolished that's unclear but if you're making a systems game then there's this opportunity to build on top of your game right and game industry's done this in a few different ways um like expansion packs are one way if you play like the sims or civilization then they're adding to the game all the time but they're releasing those as expansion packs and then um some games like uh prison architect or besiege um took this early access approach arguably this is what minecraft did even though it wasn't there wasn't steam early access in those days um and so that's the model we're really looking to is um how big this game gets really just depends on uh how much community we build around it and how long we keep it can keep it going um and so yeah multiplayer is definitely pretty far down the roadmap um i don't think that um uh with like some of the near term things that people want to just like let them build awesome robots that that that's probably the first thing that we'll go to but um uh yeah so I, I would say for now i would assume single player experience probably for like a good long while assume single player experience that being said it you know if it really blew up we i mean we would love to have features i think besiege besiege added a multiplayer like years after being in early access so that that's probably the kind of thing i would expect if, if that yeah. happened for us yeah right. cool so um we are uh, kind of you know towards the end of our time block today um, i think we can keep going for a few more minutes a couple other questions i'd love to get answered um so um one uh from dr diana brain again there are so many possibilities for a game like this how did you decide what was most important or meaningful uh healthy debates i don't know <laughs> yeah no that is actually that's a great question true. i don't really know I, that, that might be the answer because um one of the things that is um you know different for this project than others that we work we've worked on uh typically at the studio is um a lot of our games we're working with an external client that has a certain budget and they have a certain learning objective in mind and we target a game to do the best we can to cover that learning objective knowing that the timeline is exactly this and robo is not that kind of game because we're we're grant funded it's an internal project um and um you know at the same time we're like a, a studio that has to like keep everybody employed and like pay the bills and we, we're not just like rolling in dollars um so we we're always just taking input from people like you um and uh having you know our own feels inside the office around like oh this this part of the game doesn't feel as good as it could or whatever um and then we're just trying to uh make the best best choices we can that like serve the um serve our player base the, the best way possible sure yeah. and then one um quite technical question um is there a reason we are using what does that say il2cpp instead of just mono uh, John would. That would be John. <laughs> I assume that's a John question. <laughs> oh, oh, John, you're, you're muted. muted. Could you oh, repeat yeah. that? I was, reading, I was reading the chat. Oh, it's all good. Um, so the question is: Is there a reason we're using IL2 CPP instead of just mono? I think this is a modding-related question. Yeah. Yeah. So currently, that's been for perform for uh, performance. Um, that has potential to change um, we'll likely be doing some profiling in the future um to, to see if we really need it part of it is due to the fact we this started out as a vr project and um you're doing a lot with vr um so there's a lot to render and, and so cutting down as much cpu time and gpu time as possible is yeah. useful and i also to, to cpp stuff is mostly cpu related so um it, there's a chance of it changing um but uh yeah but then for their exploration yeah and we're we're, we're always gonna you know have those those issues related to vr so that's that's gonna be a factor um to be honest any of you that that are listening that are in the modding community like modding is probably one of the biggest i think it's fair to say it's one of the biggest like blind spots that we have as a team um that I, I think joe you did some modding um oh, like very back little. in the day but yeah. none of us are like super experienced so um We'll probably try to figure out how to get a, a a better dialogue going with with some of you, so that we can better understand like what what kind of things you would need for modding support. 
yeah yeah please uh jump in the discord if yeah. you want to be a part of that dialogue um we're we're pretty active in there so if you have suggestions or if you just want to talk to us and give us pointers um or kind of your point of view on it we'd love to hear it yeah absolutely um, and then, so I think I'm going to do one more question today because we're we're pretty much at time. Um, so uh, this one's from Sindri Chaos in the Twitch. Um, do you foresee people taking this as far as people in Minecraft did, where entire computers are built using the individual pieces given here? Right. Uh, that that'd be crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Carter, well, you actually you have an interesting answer to this. So I think that. Um, like uh, automation right now, we uh, we or programming we don't have in in Robocode, but it is one of those things that's on our roadmap, obviously, because robot game. We would love to, to to do that kind of thing. And uh, Carter, I, if you remember, you had talked about uh, the basically the idea of like building from a uh, pretty simple language up, which is similar to what Minecraft is doing. Can you say a little about that? Um, yeah, I'm not entirely certain uh, which conversation you're talking about, but um, definitely <laughs> at least like lifting up the rule script system to the like a user facing um, interface so that so that you guys can work with that, um, which has the ability to do some scripting. But um, yeah, like in, in Minecraft, you, you have computers that are built out of like redstone, but then you've also got like modded computers, which are like um, a totally different thing. So you could um, potentially you could have uh, use the scripting system to do like calculations, or um, that would be like useful. But then there's also the ability to like maybe make calculators mechanically, um, which yeah, I would love to see. Yeah, I think the um, the thing I remember you talking about Carter, and this I think this will be familiar to anyone that's using like logic blocks and um, scrap mechanic type systems that uh, we. Uh, to be honest, we don't know exactly what we're going to do, you know, like if programming is enough down the road that we haven't figured out, but I think that our strategy would be something along the lines of uh, you can you can do simple things simply, and then if you want to make more complicated things, it will be amalgamations of more and more of those simple things on top of each other until they finally become complex, right? Yeah, um, if you're... If yeah. you're willing to do the complicated things, you're probably <laughs> going to be willing to do them with a simple interface. Right. Um, because, uh, yeah, I think just, you know, based on the feel of the game and how we've approached robot building in general, we don't want to have, like, a, a really uh, intimidating form of programming. We want to have, like, a really accessible form of, yeah. okay, I can, I can hook up some, some scripting logic that gets me some basic behaviors. But, um, yeah, we don't, we don't, we don't know either. So that's, that's definitely something that also we'd love any feedback that people have. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks for helping answer the questions and thanks to the chat for providing so many awesome questions and for tuning in today. We're probably going to wrap things up, uh, but we really appreciate you all tuning in. We hope you've enjoyed sort of a behind the scenes look at Roboco as well as some gameplay here with Joe. Um, Anything anyone else wants to say before we sign off? Uh, just thanks for coming, everybody. Um, make sure you check out um, our Discord, like we mentioned, um, or the Roboco website uh, at roboco.co. That's where our dev blog is, and we're going to have a, kind of a more robust website up there um, in the very new future, next few weeks, I would say. Um, so stay on the lookout for that. Um, and then otherwise, uh, yeah, um, stay tuned on Steam. Uh, Add us to your wish list if you have not. Tell your friends and family to do the same. We really appreciate it. Um, and then also, um, there is uh, the next opportunity after the Steam Games Festival to play the game will be a closed alpha um, that's going to happen later this year. Um, so if you want to sign up for that, um, it's going to be free. So you can just hop over to our Discord and use the sign-up form there. Um, and once that's ready, um, you'll be notified. Um, so uh yeah thanks again everyone thanks for coming thanks to the devs for answering all the questions i think that's a wrap awesome cool cool all right thanks everyone thanks Bye everyone now. see you next Thank time bye, bye.